Welcome to Evolve, where we have fearless, unfiltered, unapologetic conversation with host Chanel Spencer, author, speaker, and CEO of Maximum Evolution. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Hello, 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 beautiful people, and welcome back to Evolve, where we have fearless, unfiltered, unapologetic conversation because it's just mandatory on this side of the world. You know, I'm a firm believer in being the best version of yourself, being genuine and being authentic in every kind of way, because that's just the best way I'm just saying. But today I'm super, super excited because I have a special guest we are currently working on a project called Stuck Is Not Your Story series. And, you know, we, we're mixing it up a little bit with, with these episodes. And I'm super, super excited to have one of our amazing co-authors um, that is on this project as well. And so introduce yourself to beautiful people. And I say yes. give a 60 second clubhouse intro, just in case. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. I am Janice Freeman. I am a speaker, pastor, entrepreneur, and a coach, business owner, author, writer, mentor, and once again, I'm Miss Freeman. I am a hard worker, which means I'm an entrepreneur who rarely burns a midnight oil of achievement to get it done. I am Janice Freeman, once again, resides in Southern California, and I am a mother of three beautiful sons. They're older, but I'm blessed. Yes, you better go ahead with that intro. Listen, she was like, 60 seconds, I got you. <laughs> 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 so, so, so tell the people so we're a part of this book project I'm actually a co-author on the project as well I was honored thank you Noreen, for that um, so tell the people why you chose your chapter title wow because basically my chapter title was chosen because I believe men and women need to hear a little bit more about this particular topic that I've chosen uh, should I share it now or hold off to the to the great? Well, first tell the people what the name of your chapter is. That's a great point there. <laughs> the name of my chapter is, is it worth the ring? Like the wedding ring, is it mm, worth it? Mm. Yes, that's a, good, that's a good question. We're definitely gonna get into that tea. <laughs> so why did, you, why, did you, why did you name it that? Like what, what made you say, hmm, uh-huh, that's the name of the chapter? Yes, because of things I've gone through when I was married. Mm -hmm. Yes. So tell questions me, about that. Listen. So tell the people just a little bit, not too much, you know, because you had to buy the book if you want to know the realty. But tell the people just a little snippet about what your chapter is about. Oh wow. I'm gonna give you a very brief, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, at this point of time in my life in the book, I had two young children at the time, and I was pregnant with my third. I had to mm -hmm. walk miles to the store with a baby on my hip, one walking along the road with me and one on the way. So I want to share this. My husband at the time, I had gone to the doctor together with my husband, and the doctor told him that I was a high risk, you know, pregnancy. I had a high risk pregnancy, mm -hmm. but my husband at the time had me do all kinds of things opposite from what the doctor told me mm -hmm. and I thought about it so what do you mean are, are, is he thinking about or wanting me to lose this child mm -hmm. so taking on that responsibility so and I cleaned the car and I thought about it, if I don't clean the car and do what he told me to do I'm going to end my marriage my marriage is not going to last if I don't mm -hmm. do what he has told me to do and mm -hmm. so I was like oh my god I was in a place where I didn't want to fail in my marriage Mm. and be ashamed if my marriage has ended because of I didn't do what I was supposed to do as a wife at that time right right so, and you can and be in a place mm -hmm. you could be in a place like should I should I not do it or if I don't and then he might do this he might go and do this it's not a lot of questions that run through your mind at the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know and so we'll get more into once you you know I don't give everything away but it's definitely is it worth the ring? Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, is it worth the ring to you in your mind? Nothing. I thank the Lord. <laughs> it wasn't worth the <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? No. <laughs> so that's oh a very God. powerful question, right? Because 
It is. Like we have to sit back and think about, you know, our partners and the person that we want to settle down with and the person that we want to be with, right? right. And you have right. to kind of assess like, all right, are the cons, no, are the pros, wait, do the pros outweigh the cons? Meaning, like you said, is it worth the ring? Is is the cost to be with you worth it, right? Like, mm-hmm. am I, in, in the sacrifices and the compromise that I'm going to have to give and do, is it worth it? to be with you right and so Mm -hmm. you have to kind of evaluate the people that are in your in your lives and that's first romantic or friendships you know what i mean um because oftentimes we'll 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 have a vision of what we want things to be and we will drive ourselves to the ground trying to make it that when it had never had the capacity to be that to begin with right and so right I think that's a very, very powerful question. Like, is it worth the ring? Like, is it worth, like, what is it going to cost you for you mm-hmm. to get that ring? Like, is it, you know what I mean? And so what right. do you feel it costs you um, to get the ring? It costs me uh, close to my life because I was um, at the, the situation. Would like, I don't want to go too much in it because I don't want them. Okay. It costs me mm-hmm. too close to losing my life. Mm. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they have to read the book, but it just, it just, um, well, it's a chapter, but yeah, it's actually, you can be in a place in your life mm-hmm. and you're like, this is the person and you're, you're, you're offering up your, your emotions, your feelings and your, the love for the person. And at that time, he, he was all that for me, I thought. Mm-hmm. And what I've gone through, it was like jumping through hoops. Mm-hmm. You know, if you sit down for a moment and then, hey, can you just do this? I mean, I understand submissive, being submission to the, being submissive to your husband. I understand mm-hmm. that. But mm-hmm. as far as doing things that took place in the marriage, mm-hmm. it, 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 it didn't add up <laughs> to right. where it was worth the ring because what I experienced in the marriage. Mm-hmm. and so I was so excited and happy like oh yeah I'm getting married yeah. but this brought me to a place of reevaluating who I am mm-hmm. and what I'm looking for what my standards are mm-hmm. you know and so it's very important because you can say you know at the time when I got married I was younger but at that time I was like yes I was early in my early 20s but mm-hmm. It, it, it helped me grow and to learn some things from that place, mm-hmm. but it wasn't easy. You can avoid that situation if you just take your time and be still and knowing your standard and hold on to that standard. You say, oh, you know what? This person have half of it, but I can deal with it. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that you don't ignore the flags mm-hmm. in the situation. You can be desperate for marriage. You can be, oh, I want to be because da da da. But is it worth it? Mm-hmm. The cry, I always say, is it worth to cry over that situation? Is mm-hmm. it worth that time? Is it mm-hmm. worth your destiny? Mm-hmm. Because you got to be careful who you line yourself up with. Mm-hmm. You ain't never lie. Let me say something. I am a firm believer. Um, and aligning aligning the right people to my life, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because for so long, I say that the people that you have around you are a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself, right? And right. so, so when I would have, once I became clear on who I wanted to be, and I became mm-hmm. aligned with my purpose and what I wanted out of life, it mm-hmm. then made it easier for me to remove the things and remove the people that no longer served served my greatest good and Mm -hmm. or served what my main purpose in life is right and so you have to evaluate relationships the exact same way like yes we love each other yes I love you and love is really great don't get me wrong love is amazing when it's good healthy love it's amazing Mm -hmm. right but like you said it's like okay they're half of the things that I want so I'll just settle for the other half that isn't and it's like okay well like you said well what at what cost will what what cost will that then give to you right like what expense Mm -hmm. will you be paying in settling for the things that they aren't 
And we have to remember that it's an abundant world and what we want is out there. We just have to sit and be patient, but be in action at the same time to get what it is that we want. And once you have that realization, it just makes life so much easier. And yes, it's very hard to end relationships. Yes, it's very hard to cut people off, mm-hmm. but sometimes for your sanity jail, it is very important to do so. And like you said, it, it, it almost cost you your life, right? And yes. like, it's a powerful thing to come to that revelation, but it's an even more powerful thing to action it and do the things that are necessary to get you back to safety, get you back to your greatest version of yourself, get you back to, you know, being loving yourself and and doing the things that you need to do and putting yourself first. Like I, I commend you and I will commend anybody that makes that decision because it's one of the hardest decisions in the entire world to, to make, right? You yes. you get married and you have an ex- expectation of how things are going to look and want to control the outcome. But sometimes there's a different, there's a different path that you need to take. And it's when you make that decision to get back aligned to where you're supposed to be, things just flow to you with no questions asked. And it's just so magnetic and it's so amazing. And so again, I just commend you for making that decision because I know that being in it, it was definitely a tough one to make because I've had to make those kinds of decisions as well. So I commend you for that. So okay. what what is it that you what is it that you do? How do you help individuals? Wow. How do I oh wow. Being an entrepreneur and helping other individuals, um, I have a a production and I have um I'm a life coach as well. Work with young women um in a place of their life in domestic violence, because I experienced domestic violence. And um, I thank the Lord that I did not lose my voice in the process of domestic violence. Yeah. And to help women, I do one-on-ones with them. Um, I go and do groups with the women at their facilities mm-hmm. and I meet them where they're at. And whatever the Lord gives me to pour into them, that's what I pour mm-hmm. into them. Mm-hmm. And um, I work with young youth kids. I have a nonprofit called Catch a Change. Mm-hmm. Catching the vision of someone else's dreams, which is our youth. And I, my background uh, for 12 years in human services. And the, but before then, the Lord has actually spoke to me to help his babies. And I asked him how. And so that's how Catch Change came about. And I still work with the young kids today and, and to bring change and, and going to the schools and um, their organization as well. We're mobile. And mm-hmm. uh, it's so important to hear them out and seeing what's going on, you have to have the passion to do it. It's not about the money, it's about the heart. And I know funding would come, but my focus is, is bringing, for help bringing forth change and planting seeds in their lives to help them turn. And um, from that experience with our youth, we have six to eight weeks workshops. And um, it's about life skills, it's about their life. I mean, mean, so many different things about loving themselves, self-confidence, being motivated, taking their life back, taking, you know, taking their love back for themselves. And um, it's so important. Uh, People are my heart, period. But with the young kids, uh, it's so funny. One day, years ago, I want to share this with you. One day, I, I actually was on a platform in Los Angeles uh, Washington, they had the green line, blue line, you know, there, my car broke down, somebody dropped me off there, and somebody was calling my name, I said, I'm not the only Janice here on this platform, I looked around and turned around, by the time I turned, I almost fell, because this young lady grabbed me so tight, and she hugged me, and almost fell, and she, do you remember me, I said, oh, yes, yes, I do, so how's it going? She's so excited. She was happy. She said, thank you so much for spending time with us, especially with me, she says. She listened to her grandmother. She, she's working. She's doing better in school. She said, because you came and you spent time and you spoke to us to do better and her life changed. And I said, Lord, that's, that's you because being obedient to the Lord and he gives me the topics and what to talk about, what type of incentives to give the kids and leave with them. There was a reminder of that seed being implanted, you know, in their lives to let it grow. And so many different young girls and young men has come to me and have been great um, impact in their lives. And that's what we're supposed to do anyway. But I thank the Lord for the assignment to do this. Uh, to help in that arena with the, the young kids, with their vision, their dreams, 
and um, not looking at them where they at in a negative eye, in a negative view, because everybody has gone through something. Everybody has done some silliness in their life growing up. No one is exempt, but it's the choices that you make, like I tell these kids, the decision that you make determines your outcome. So what do you want your outcome to be? And I talk to them like a parent, you know, and I thank the Lord for that. And also with the young women in with the, the She Got Up um, sector is I do plays, we're actually working on my first play because like I said, being led by the Lord, because he's number one in my life and my relationship with the Lord. And as he directs, I'm working on my uh, play right now for the beginning of the year and just different projects I'm working on and, and helping the, the women to get up from that place they're at and to know that they don't have to stay there. And um, doing conferences and seminars uh, to be a blessing to many around the world. Hello? So I'm thinking. I absolutely love what you do because, you know, the impact that we have on children as adults is so important and so vital. And so the fact that you help children and help kids to, you know, to become who they need to be is super, super um, amazing. And I absolutely love it. And I'm a firm believer on building legacy. And so with my children, I, I have meetings with them. They're authors and they're all the pieces because I understand that us as adults, we create their minds, right? We don't have control over who they're going to become in the world, but we do have we do have the power to instill specific values and things in them that help them to become amazing individuals in the world, right? And so I absolutely love that that's part of what you do because I feel like that's super vital, super important um, for, um, for the future, for sure. And so my next question for you is what's next for you? What's next for me? It's my stage play. <laughs> yes, but prior to the stage play is that um, I'm actually doing a conference coming up in September. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually wrote another book. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you out here doing things. <laughs> it's a series. Just a little bit. It's a series um, from uh, She Got Up from the first book. But yet mm -hmm. it is a series on get, called Get Up which is a 58 day motivational journal, meaning mm. the five signifies grace, eight signifies new beginnings. So the tag is gracing 58. Wow. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I love that. And you're out here making plays and crap. Like you, you a game changer, I see. That's amazing. That's so amazing. For real, for real. Do you have any final words for our audience? Final words, I would love to share with the, everyone. You have vision, you have dreams, you have purpose. And just aim towards your destiny and do it with a push. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I absolutely love that. And how can our audience connect with you? Well, they can connect with me. I have a website called shegotup.com. Mm -hmm. I have a, I actually have a email, which is she got up number three mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Also have a Facebook. She got up number three. And then the Instagram is she got up. Okay. Yeah. Does the three signify anything or it's just like, I need to put something in place so I can get this, this name. It's, it's, it's funny because three signifies I was born. That's the month I was born in. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the number right. three is also represents the father, son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm, oh, you better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on Evolve Platform. We definitely appreciate you. And to our lovely listening audience, I hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as I did creating it. And again, I'm super excited about this project stuff. It's not your story. 
It is definitely yeah. a game changing book. So if you haven't gotten your copy, make sure you go to Stuck is Not Your Story book.com to grab your copy. I'm super excited for Janice and everything that she has going on. Because uh, listen, I love to be around game changing individuals because I am a game changer and a game changer agent. However, Lisa Nichols says it. <laughs> and I absolutely <laughs> love extraordinary people that are out here doing the things that most are scared to do. Okay, I'm just saying. So again, thank you so much for coming on our platform and to my lovely listening audience. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a review, do all the things. I appreciate you. Until next time, bye, beautiful people. Thank you for tuning in to Evolve. Stay fearless, unfiltered, and unapologetic. Until next time, special shout out to all of our amazing listeners. You are truly appreciated. Follow our host, Chanel Spencer, at Chanel Spencer Now on Instagram and Facebook. Songs I'm From the South by D21 from Black Mob Entertainment off the 720 God album. Find him on Instagram at only D21. I'm from the South. I'm from the South. You're the dead. Straight out the South. We'll hit his rock gold teeth straight out your mouth. My niggas don't know peace. Fuck is he saying though? Homie is he playing though? Know my old dudes bring more than a candle. Bring the heat to them. There they keep talking. Know that they would end. Little dogs barking. Step across the line. Be south.